Defense contractor Oshkosh's CEO was recently interviewed by CNBC and the answers he gave are more than just bending the truth. If you don't know, Oshkosh is the company that was awarded the largest EV contract in the US history, which was to build the USPS a new fleet of vehicles. This is kind of a big deal. So let's take a look at some of his interview answers and see if they stack up against reality. And let me give you a hint, they don't. We've always known that electrification provides performance benefits. Of course, it provides environmental benefits. It's yeah. been recently that we've been able to get the technology to a point where it provides economic benefits. I think that's why we're seeing it take off. And you've seen it in our recent uh, announcement that we won the postal contract. Mm -hmm. It allows us to electrify throughout the contract and make that fleet zero emission. Uh, that's directly in line with what President Biden's objectives are to make that fleet zero emission. Okay, he's saying that they're electrifying the Postal Service's fleet, and that is directly in line with Biden's objectives. And this is just straight up false. Let me break it down. Their contract is a 10-year contract, and it's calling for a minimum of 10% EVs. They may build more EVs than that, but they don't have to. Now, contrast that to the Biden administration's goal of converting all federal cars and trucks to be electric by 2030. That means potentially 90% of the vehicles that they're going to make would not be in line with the Biden administration's goal. So saying they're directly in line with Biden's objectives is true if we want to say that directly means about 90% wrong. And of course, the CEO knows this because the Biden administration has challenged their lack of EVs in this contract. The Biden administration, which is urging the Postal Service to reconsider its intention to buy mostly gas-powered trucks. The federal government, including the EPA, has sent numerous letters and complaints trying to convince the USPS and Oshkosh to increase their use of EVs. And it's not like the CEO of Oshkosh is just oblivious to this. It's been all over the national news. So we know that he's giving us straight up lip service. But it doesn't stop there. Let's get to the next part of the interview because it gets even worse. Uh, the contract includes an initial $482 million investment from the Postal oh. Service. Uh, I think it's worth something like $6 billion. Uh, to build up to 165,000 of these next generation delivery yeah. vehicles. It's been getting right. a lot of attention, not because of Oshkosh, but because of the losing bidder in this competition, and that's <laughs> Workhorse. Uh, are, you, yeah. are you frustrated uh, that more folks, more investors potentially don't understand what you do in the EV space? Uh, what I can tell you, Morgan, is that we won this contract fairly. We won this contract very simply because we provided the best solution for the postal carrier and for the postal service. You know, it's an, we provide an electrified platform. All right, I'm not a psychologist or interrogation expert or anything, but when he says, what I can tell you is that we won it fair and square, it immediately makes me think there's stuff he's not telling me and that they didn't win it fair and square. But maybe I'm just not a very trusting person, so let's look at the facts and I'll try and keep this brief. If we rewind to before the contract was awarded, there were some fishy things going on behind the scenes in almost every area. But let's just look at the prototypes. Before we dive into the federal government's terrible investments, I wanna show you a new investment opportunity with this video's sponsor, Masterworks. I'm heavily invested in renewable energies and EV companies, as you probably know if you watch the channel. And given that's most of my portfolio, I decided it was time to diversify at least a little bit. I'm not gonna recommend a product or company that I don't approve of, so I did my research and decided to put my money where my mouth was, and I made my own personal investment with them before making this video. Masterworks is a sort of hybrid between an art collector and a tech platform, but the short of it is that they give you the capability to invest in contemporary blue chip art like Picasso, Banksy, Monet, and a bunch of others. What really piqued my interest is that in the past 25 years, contemporary art prices have been outperforming the S&P 500 total return by 164%, averaging 14% annual returns. If a low risk investment is outperforming the S&P 500 over the long run, I'm interested. And what's even crazier to me is that the last 25 years have been a bull run for the S&P, which makes Masterworks portfolio even more impressive. Other than the solid returns in the past, contemporary art pricing has a low correlation with stock and bond pricing, which is helpful for managing volatility. And so it's extra helpful for me. If you're interested, I've got a link in the description for how to invest. You can sign up in less than 60 seconds. But I want to be clear, this isn't investment advice, no returns are guaranteed, and always do your own investment research. 
Okay, so Oshkosh submitted a prototype that was not only not an electric vehicle, but it wasn't even one that they built. Now I'm familiar with companies producing prototypes where they use some sort of off the shelf components just to get a proof of concept. And I totally understand that. But what Oshkosh did was something completely different. For their prototype that they submitted to the USPS, they used a Ford Transit van with some very minor modifications. According to several sources, while an early prototype from Oshkosh Defense was based on the existing Ford Transit van, the final vehicle that won the bid is a purpose-built, ground-up design. So not only did they not build an electric prototype, but all they really did was modify a Ford Transit van for their submission, and yet that was enough for the USPS. This is the van they say they're going to make, and this is the prototype they actually submitted. Oh, and here's the Ford Transit. All they showed is that Ford can make a solid diesel van, which that's all fine and dandy, but how is that a useful prototype submission? Oshkosh is planning to build a new vehicle from the ground up, and that will be the actual van that they delivered to the USPS. So why is the prototype just a retrofitted Ford? It blows my mind how stupid that is. Like, it's totally fine to not have a fully functioning model with all the bells and whistles, but submitting Ford's van with some minor retrofitting doesn't tell any one about their capability to actually manufacture vehicles. And that was enough to win the multi-billion dollar contract, throw some new doors and new bumpers on a Ford, spray paint it and call it a day. And also Oshkosh had the nerve to say that quote, the vehicles will be equipped with either fuel efficient internal combustion engines or battery electric powertrains and can be retrofitted to keep pace with advances in electric vehicle technologies, which sounds great, but like we just talked about, they haven't even built a prototype with that technology. But what they knew is that with that statement, they would give the federal government what they needed to hear. At this point, Oshkosh is just listing a bunch of things that they know the USPS would really like with no proof. And they said these new vans would be efficient. So let's check out that claim. The new vans, which keep in mind are replacing vans from the Reagan administration, have only improved the MPGs by 0.4, not four, not 40, but 0.4, that gives them 8.6 miles per gallon with the AC running. And I looked it up to see if that was normal because I don't know much about delivery vans of that size, but no, the Ford Transit van, which is roughly the same size, gets about double that miles per gallon. So I think it's more than a bit of a stretch to call them a fuel efficient internal combustion engine when they're barely an improvement from the super old models they're replacing. Oh, and are you ready for this? Oshkosh said before that they'd make at least 10% percent of the vans electric. But in a filing to the SEC just a few months before they won the contract, they said this about their ability to actually make electric vehicles. Quote, we may not have the expertise or resources to successfully address these pressures on a cost effective basis or at all. While we are continuing to explore options to offer more propulsion choices in our products, such as electric powered vehicles or mobile equipment, with lower emissions, this may require us to spend additional funds on product research and development and implementation costs and subject us to the risk that our competitors may respond to these pressures in a manner that gives them a competitive advantage. Let me sum that up for you. When asked by the federal government if they could make a cost-effective electric vehicle for the federal government, Oshkosh said, uh, nope. And yet despite that answer, the CEO of Oshkosh still has the nerve to go on national TV and tell the public that they're electrifying the USPS fleet. And USPS Postmaster DeJoy has also seemingly not wanted EVs. He said part of his reasoning is this. He also said there are over 12,000 postal routes, quote, where distance, environmental conditions, or facility limitations make electric vehicles unfeasible or impractical. And let me just really quick point out how silly this reasoning is. He says that there are 12,000 routes where EVs would be impractical, and fair enough. But the contract is for 165,000 vehicles, meaning for these new vehicles, only around 7% of the routes wouldn't work for EVs. And because of that, they're doing 90% gas power. It makes no sense. They could almost exactly flip that ratio and do 90% EVs and 10% gas power, and that would still totally work for his complaints. But far be it for me to try and get DeJoy to use any kind of rational reasoning. So let's sum this up. The USPS has hired defense contractor Oshkosh to build their new delivery vans, which were supposed to be at least mostly electric. 
But Oshkosh admitted that they may not be able to build EVs at a competitive price, and so instead, they're making as little as 10% of the vans electric, despite the CEO telling the public a completely different story. Uh, that's directly in line with what President Biden's objectives are to make that fleet zero emission. If you want to hear the rest of the story about how it really looks like DeJoy is using this situation to personally profit, check out my other video right here. If you appreciate this video where I'm trying to expose the lies and corruption in the federal government and their contractors, consider supporting me on Patreon. I want to, at the very least, try to expose some of the corrupt things going on behind the scenes, and your support helps me keep doing just that. Also, I know it's cringy to ask, but if you wouldn't mind sharing this video to someone who you think would find it interesting, that would be hugely helpful to me. Ooh.